Are you thinking of buying a condo in Toronto? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process from A to Z of buying a condo in Toronto. Along the way, I'm gonna debunk several myths and point out multiple tips that I've learned throughout my career as a real estate agent that'll save you thousands of dollars on your purchase. Let's get into it right now. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Philip Kotlier and I've been a full-time real estate agent since 2013. In 2020, I took things up a notch and opened up my own brokerage, Urban Homes Real Estate. Along the way, I've had the privilege of helping hundreds of families invest in homes and investment properties throughout Toronto and the surrounding area. Quick disclaimer, the tips and tricks I'm going to be sharing with you today should not be construed as legal advice or accounting advice as every individual situation is different. Feel free to set up a call with me and I can help tailor a personal personalized strategic plan just for you. Okay, the first step in the process of buying a downtown Toronto condo is enlist the services of a professional. I can already see the comment section blowing up. Haha, <laughs> he's a real estate agent. Of course he's gonna say that. Well, hear me out. The buyer's agent is free of charge for the buyer. And what I mean by that is the seller pays real estate commissions for both the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. It's baked into the transaction. So as a buyer, you are not gonna be paying out of pocket for the professional services of a real estate agent representing your interests. Now, the first myth we're gonna debunk is a story I hear quite often from buyers is, hey, I'm gonna to go to the listing agent directly, they're gonna give me a bit of a deal on the price, and everything's gonna be honky-dory. Now, that is a big myth, it does not play out that way. If you think you're gonna contact the listing agent and they're gonna take care of your interests over the interests of a seller they've been working with for years potentially, you've got another thing coming. It just doesn't pan out that way. They just met you. They know their seller very well. They want to take care of them first before you. You may or may not get a reduction in price, but I can promise you the clauses that should be there were probably not going to be there. To support your interests, they're going to be there to support the seller's interests. So it's a much better strategy, in my opinion, is to have a professional on your side representing your interests going to bat for you pretty much for free. It's baked into the price. So why not? Here are some questions you should ask to evaluate an agent and determine if they're the right fit for you. Are you a full-time agent? How many years have you been in the business? How many properties do you transact with on a yearly basis? Keep in mind there's over 70,000 real estate agents in the greater Toronto area and real estate works on an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the business goes to 20% of the agents. The other 80% are usually part-time or they have a license parked that they only use for their friends and themselves. Now when you're making a big decision like buying your first property, you don't want to entrust it to a part-time agent. Why? Because the Toronto real estate market is extremely dynamic. It changes on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. And the only way to have your finger on the pulse is to be transacting consistently in this marketplace. Then you know what the best things are out there, what the worst things are out there, what pitfalls to avoid. But there's no way to do it other than consistent transactions and full-time engagement. The next step is to set up a property search email. Now your real estate agent has backend tools that allow them to circle a certain geography, input a bunch of criteria, and the system will send out new listings to our clients as soon as they hit the market. Of course, there are public facing tools you can use to search for properties, but the real estate backend tools are just a little bit more sophisticated and most importantly, they send out listings faster to our clients so that you are the first to know when a new property hits the market. A city like Toronto where real estate is very dynamic and sells quite quickly and changes quite often, you want to be notified as soon as new listings do hit the market. The next step is to get your mortgage pre-approval in writing. I can't tell you how many buyers want to skip this step and jump right into the property search, but it's a very important step to get sorted out before you see any properties for a number of reasons. Number one being once you approach a mortgage broker and get your pre-approval, the mortgage broker will tell you the maximum budget that you can afford to buy with. And that will dictate what properties we look at. There's no point in looking at properties outside of your budget. It's gonna just be a disservice to yourself. You're gonna get disappointed. The next piece that's gonna benefit you is the mortgage pre-approval will lock in an interest rate for a certain amount of months. Interest can fluctuate up and down, but if you have a commitment in writing that rate is guaranteed for X amount of days, and the last piece of how it's going to benefit you is in negotiations. If you don't have a no mortgage pre-approval in writing, you will have to put in a financing condition which will weaken your negotiating position and not allow us to get the best price possible at the end of the day. But if you are firm on financing, you do not need that mortgage condition in the agreement. The seller is that much more confident of working with you and may choose your offer over others. The next step is to get clear on what you want and what you don't want. Buying a property downtown, just just like buying a property anywhere is a collection of a lot of different decisions and the sooner you think through those decisions, 
the clearer and smoother your purchasing process will be. Decisions like, do you want a high-rise building or a mid-rise building? What are the pros and cons of both? Do you want a newer building or an older building? For example, a newer building, you may not have any outdoor space because a lot of new buildings are built without balconies nowadays. So if a balcony or a terrace is very important for you, you may just cross out new buildings altogether. Do you want a lot of amenities or do you want not so many amenities? Because the maintenance fees will be affected by a large amenity package, especially with a pool and additional amenities. So all those things, the sooner you think through them, the faster and smoother your purchase process will be. Prepare for multiple offers, a process that I am definitely not a fan of, but just a reality of Toronto today, because Toronto is a city with uh, not enough housing to fit its growing population, which has led to the process of multiple offers and offer presentation dates. Let me give you a quick example to illustrate how this works. A seller has a property that they know is worth 700,000. They will purposely list the property lower for 499,000 to encourage as many buyers as possible to come through and view the property. The seller will then set an offer presentation date of either seven or 10 days from the initial listing dates. The seller will not accept any offers until this offer presentation date. And on this date, all the buyers that want to will bring an offer. The offer numbers can get up into the double digits and buyers get excited when they see other offers come forward. They end up overpaying in certain cases for the property. This process is um, only beneficial to sellers and it creates inflation in our sales prices, which is why I am not a fan of it. The next step is to enter the conditional period. If you're buying a condo in the city of Toronto, you're going to definitely have a status certificate review condition in your agreement. What is a status certificate? These are the financial documents for the condominium corporation. They also include any lawsuits or any outstanding judgments against the condominium corporation. So you definitely want to review that with your lawyer and your real estate agent before making the final decision of whether to move forward with your purchase or not. Things you're going to look closely at are one, the reserve fund if there's enough money in the reserve fund to fund any future capital improvements that the condominium was going to want to do if there are any lawsuits against the condominium that could be a potential red flag also if there's any special assessments coming up that could definitely be a red flag as well if you do find any of these issues you are able to back out of the deal and return your five percent deposit without deduction the next step is to prepare for the final closing the typical closing timeline would be around 90 days if you wanted a faster closing it would be 45 to 60 days. And if you wanted a longer closing, it would be 120 to 150 days out. Now I'm going to share one tip with you guys that recently saved my clients thousands of dollars on the purchase of their new condo. And that is the day before your closing, schedule your final buyer revisit. On this revisit, you're going to test all the appliances in the condo. You're going to run all the faucets, flush all the toilets, make sure everything is in working order. During my client's visit, we discovered the oven, the fridge, and the dishwasher stopped working miraculously. Months earlier, when we toured the property, everything was in working order. But on this day prior to closing, for whatever reason, they stopped working. We were able to present this to the lawyer and get a significant discount off the purchase price. But guess what? If you don't notify the lawyer, if the closing happens, good luck trying to get money out of the seller after the closing day. And that concludes our A to Z walkthrough of buying a condo in Toronto. I hope you found value in the information shared and perhaps you can use these tips and tricks to benefit your condo purchase. If you'd like to chat real estate, feel free to set up a call with me. There's a link in the description below with direct access to my calendar. That's it for today. We'll see you guys on the next one.